The third classification scheme for numeric data that's very commonly used in GIS is something that's called natural breaks. With natural breaks, our algorithm tries to identify naturally occurring categories in the data distribution and separate the data based on these break points. The technique that is used in ArcGIS is called Jenks natural breaks. That's a well-known technique, but again, it requires a lot of understanding of uh, variance and and we just don't have that yet in this class in order to teach you that method. But for now, in order to demonstrate the general idea, we can go over something called the single linkage approach. And in this algorithm, what we are going to do is take our list of numbers and identify the largest gap between any two sequential numbers and create a, and create a division in the data at that point. That's going to divide the set of numbers into two different sets, one above the break, one below the break. And for each of those two sets, we're going to then find the single largest uh, difference between any two sequential numbers in each of those two sets. And we're going to keep on dividing the data in this way based on finding the single largest distance between two sequential numbers. So in this, in the, in a way, this is a, a, a subdivision strategy. We start with the entire set of numbers and we start grouping these numbers up according to where uh, we, we start subdividing the numbers based on where they lie with respect to this largest breakpoint. Here we are with the same set of 20 numbers. The first step that we need to do is find the single largest gap between any two numbers in this data set. I've already done this but you'll, if you look at these numbers and try to find the difference between pairs of numbers, so the difference here, 0 and 1, is 1. The difference between 0 and 1 is 1. The difference between 1 and 4 is 3. Between 4 and 22 is 18. 22 and 25 is 3. Here we've got a 7. And if we were to continue to do this, in fact, it's a pretty good exercise. So let's do it. So all I'm doing is writing down the difference between uh, uh, the, each number and the number above it. And now we need to identify the largest difference in this list. And the largest one here is 18. 18 is the difference between 4 and 22. So we're going to make our first breakpoint between 4 and 22. After we've done that, we're going to look at the, the numbers Oh, I'm sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. 4 and 22. After we do that, we're going to look at the numbers uh, above this breakpoint and look at the numbers below and repeat the procedure. So if we go above, the biggest difference is between 1 and 4. The difference is 3. So that's going to be the location of our second breakpoint. And below 22, the biggest difference occurs between 48 and 60. The difference was 12. So in this case, we have our four groups based on natural breaks. One group over here, another over here, another over here, and another over here. Now right away we can see that this isn't really such a great uh, algorithm for finding classifications. The main reason is that the m most significant break in our data occurs, by chance, very close to the bottom end of the range of values, which means that all future breaks are going to have to exist within uh, this, this narrow range of numbers. So we're overemphasizing, perhaps, the differences that exist in this set in comparison that, to the differences that exist over here. On this slide, I'm showing you maps of of racial composition in, in counties across the United States. The nine maps correspond to different races and different techniques for, quant for classifying the race data. Across the three columns, we have natural breaks, quantile, and equal interval classification schemes. 
and down the three rows we have maps showing the percentage of people who are white, the percentage of people who are black, and the percentage of people who responded as Hispanics in the U.S. Census. What I want you to do is go back and look at the pros and cons and the characteristics of these three classification schemes and tell me where you see examples of these pros and cons occurring in, in these nine map examples. We're going to be discussing these examples in class.